Welcome back to Let's Play God of War. I'm Burning Dog Face, and uh, last time Kratos flipped a temple upside down, jumped off of Yggdrasil, and ended up at uh, the Tower of Jotunheim. Now we're being rushed by a whole bunch of these guys, and it's uh, well, honestly, it's looking still looking pretty good for us because these guys are weak as cardboard. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Enough of this. I kind of forgot I put that one on, but I don't mind. All right. I'll do it the old-fashioned way. This is madness! Double kill! Oh, wow, that's over. Me too. That was rough. The brood explode when they die. We can use this to damage and knock away any nearby enemies. What was that first one then? Oh, you're a big guy, shit. Still at level 3, though. Uh, that part was suggested to me as being because they had absolutely no. They had to assume I hadn't done any optional stuff and they were coming up with enemy levels. Like, consider that, you know. I might not have ever even found the stuff to go to Muspelheim by this point. On your left. Oh, good. Now there's two of them. Feel good. It will feel good, though. Uh, no, we've went too far. It went too far. Uh, yes. Because this is pretty sick. I like that. Just throw myself over there. Cause a massive area of effect concussion on impact. The enemy hitting all enemies nearby. Plus one damage. Burn and stun. Ow. He blocked it! You shitbag! Alright, you sh. Damn it! I did that one on purpose as I wanted to reflect it, and I've got the timing wrong. Oh. Oh, he teleported. Ow. All right, enough of this. No. Hey, that's bad. Let's make this quick. Come on. Found the healing stuff. So did he. Boy, that was not, you know, real great survival uh, instinct right there, my dude. Okay. 
Okay, that was actually pretty good. I don't know that you did that on purpose, but I, it, it felt good. You know, dodging out of the way just in time for me to bring the hammer down on an exploding mine. Good thing Rage is already blind, my dude. Long live the king. Shit, that was the big one. If we can freeze or weaken it, it won't be able to recover in the air when launched or knocked out of aerial attacks. That's actually pretty good. Oh no! We're back in hell? Oh dear, here they come. Oh, a new one. Gloom Nightmare. Uh, these have made good target practice for me and my bow. A couple of arrows would probably bring them down. Ow. Oh wait! Catch! Oh, that was badass! I felt bad last time for how overpowered I was compared to them, but god damn! Fine, you can dance with me. I love the way it carves up the floor as he does that. Shitheads crapping on me this entire game. Would you knock that shit off? I'm trying to dodge the side. How dare you! Now then. Where was I? Oh, yes. I let that one pass so I could do this. I fucking skewered him. I got this. Thanks, son! Surely that's enough of that. Oh boy. So is the building itself? This won't be good. I do want to battle the Bruiser Brothers. I felt that one, brother. Shame on you. But good for me. Because I'm one of them this time. Yeah. 
you be there. Oh, god damn it. You can cover a long distance in one stride, it turns out. He's already made of fire, though. Alright, since that's not working against the bigger enemies, and uh, since that is a bigger enemy... What am I doing? What am I doing? I didn't actually shift tabs. Okay, okay, I'm just... Swap that out for it's charging. I don't know why it's going through. No! Excuse me! Who do you think you're dealing with? More offended by anything else than, uh, for the fact that you thought that would work. Last time I was in your home. Like an overripe melon. Uh oh, I'm not doing this. You stop. Daudi Mooner. We killed this one while trying to restore the Otenheim Tower to the Lake of Nine and all the realms. When the door is open to Muspelheim, I guess he wanted to see what was happening. Why is every troll's first and only instinct to attack? <laughs> I think it's over. Aye, but where are we? We didn't do Vanaheim or... Wrath of Artemis? A slash attack that protects Kratos by pushing away all nearby enemies. Now this is very interesting to me, oops, because that symbol there reminds me that in God of War 1, uh, I think the only other weapon you could get your hands on, aside from the Blades of Chaos, was the Sword of Artemis, this like giant two-handed thing that uh, she apparently used to kill a titan once. Oh! If I equip that, then it would just be the one. I probably should have it in my hand. And that just pushes dudes backwards. Huh? It's not as impressive as I'd hoped, but you know. What am I doing? Yes. Um, which one is this? Yes, that was a good one. Yeah, I liked that. Um, honestly, let's just put the explosion in there. It is nice to be able to just do a ton of damage really, really quick. Pressing bumper again after the first slash performs a second crisscross attack that launches enemies into the air. Exciting! And, oops, inflicts a large amount of stun and burn attack on the second attack. Okay, I'll just leave this, since I have to, but, you know. Oh. Any monies lying around? No. Where is the actual door? Is it this one? Look! We're back in Midgar! There's oh, no. the bridge! We did it! The tower's back where it belongs! Now Tyr's travel room can take us to Jotunheim. How did Tyr do this? This is bad! I suspected the giant secretly possessed some remnant of primordial Jotnar creative essence. The stuff all realms are made of. The Unity Stone must have been fashioned from that essence. To trust an outsider with it, even Tyr, tells you just how desperate they were. And look! Now we can finally light all the braziers and see what happens. Another name. Gloindel! 
It's as if they've been made into a memorial to the Valkyries. Oh, look what's suddenly here. Oh, we're here. How odd. I don't know why I'm surprised this is where it is on the map. It's just... Oh. I, was, I don't know. I wasn't expecting to see the giant wheels. God damn it, me. Is it weird that I kind of want to get the other towers before I do that? I mean, we've already done a very bad thing by bringing the Odenheim Tower back to where Odin can reach it. Alright, um... Feeling okay, son? You know what's weird is that there wasn't a boat here before. Maybe this one's just been sitting there for hundreds of years. All right, there's a. It's 31 age years old. There's a tower I haven't lit yet. Uh... Oh, interesting. You can turn if the I'm camera not mistaken, around all the way. We've yet to discuss the tale of the giant Bergelmiev. Oh, yeah. I remember his shrine. It looked happier than the other ones, mostly. It begins in an ocean of blood. Finally, a story worth hearing. <laughs> if you remember, Emir, the first giant, was fatally stabbed by Odin. It's in his blood our story starts. Emir's magical guts poured out in a torrent so violent it threatened to flood all of creation. The Jotnar were unprepared, as the very last of them were washed away in the endless tide. Arg? Not just Emir, but all of giant kind faced extinction. And so would Odin's victory have been complete. But... Emir's kind did not all perish that day. Yeah, I was going to say, I thought they Staying were all Yotnar. afloat Yotnar. in the hollowed husk of a tree, the frost giant Bergelmir endured, as did his lady wife. For weeks they sailed, until finally they came upon a new land. They called it Jotunheim. And there they would start anew. As father and mother, they would multiply exceedingly, and as king and queen... They worked to make Jotunheim a land where giants would know no master but themselves. Bergelmir never sought revenge for Odin's slaughter. His vengeance was to live and prosper. He died at peace, a legion of his kin to mourn him. He would ever be known as Bergelmir the Beloved. Bergelmir the Beloved. Huh. I like that. Bergelmir and his queen survived the flood of Emir's blood and founded Jotunheim. They did not seek revenge except to live and see his kind prosper. Bergelmir the Beloved. A happy ending! And of course they made it so that it's pretty much the last stone you have to find. Uh, I wanted to read a comment from Edric, shout out, who actually told the story of Bergelmir, which is apparently a bit different in the actual myths. Uh, Bergelmir was the grandson of Ymir. In the poetic Edda, a wise Jotun tells Odin, I remember before the earth was formed, when Bergelmir was put in his cradle. In the pose, uh, uh, in the prose, in the prose Edda, Edda, sorry, that's two different things, poetic and prose, it seems that Snorri Sturluson has tried to create a parallel with the Noah's Flood myth. Uh... You know, Noah's Ark and all that. Because instead of saying Bergelmir is put in his wooden cradle, he claims that he entered a wooden boat with his wife and survived a flood of blood. Caused an Odin and his brothers killed Ymir. That sounds oddly familiar. 
After the flood, Burglemir and his wife arrived at a new land and started to have a lot of children. They would be the ancestors of the Jotnar. This is the interesting part. Due to the strong parallel with Noah, it seems likely that Snorri just made that up. And we should take the poetic Edda as canon, that Burglemir was just the grandson of Ymir, and uh, you know, the Jotun was remembering when they put him in a cradle. I've never heard a story end that way. Not a true one, anyway. You do, laddie. Oh. I'm probably supposed to find that about eight million years ago. I. Are you fucking kidding me? The thing is broken? <laughs> well, okay, I guess it won't be this spot, but, uh, I'm Burning Dog Face, and I will see you on the next episode of Let's Play God of War when we find out... I don't know, uh, another way up there. I was not anticipating to even have to think of this. <laughs> so we're gonna light all the braziers if we can. And then go back after, uh, the travel room to go beam ourselves to Jotunheim after all this time. Wish me luck, Burning Dog fans. Later.